Hey guys, welcome back. This is your host, philphonekid.com, and today we're gonna to take a look on the BlackBerry Key 2. Well, this is built by TCL. They got the license from BlackBerry. There are a few more companies who do that, but anyway, this is built by that Chinese company. Firstly, the design. This is inevitably a BlackBerry because there's only a handful of QWERTY keypad equipped phones in the market right now. I especially like the back material that's rubbery and grippy. Although if you're lost between black and silver colors of the phone, the silver one doesn't look that premium, especially the side metal finishes aren't that nice. So I reckon the black one's gonna look better. Since the keyboard is the quintessential part of BlackBerry being a BlackBerry, let's talk about it first. While the TCL claims the keys are 20% larger than the predecessor, the key pressure is very shallow, meaning that they get pressed way too easily. I do like the fingerprint reader mounted on the spacebar, which is a very convenient position, but that spacebar actually wiggles around. It makes the weird noise. But now you can customize the currency key into currency, control view notifications, switch keyword language, or the shift key. And just like before, you can assign shortcuts into 52 different keys. And it distinguishes between long and short press. So that gives you 104 different options. And now there's additional shortcut key that allows you to bring out the shortcuts on any of the screen aside from the BlackBerry launcher. And right under the power key is a convenience button that also allows any of the app to be assigned. The keyboard also supports gestures so you can swipe up, down, left, or right, but I didn't like the fact that those navigation buttons are so close into screen and the keyboard. While it's scrolling with the screen, I happen to touch the back or home button way too often. Now the display isn't too big, it's 4.5 inches of a full HD resolution in 3 to 2 ratio. The color reproduction isn't too bad, the screen gets quite bright, although there is a little fluorescent blue tint. There is no white balance option and screen uniformity is quite bad, especially on the top corner right there. Lights bleed out. Performance wise, it doesn't match the price, but Snapdragon 660 isn't bad at all. After killing all the apps, launching the app, closing that, launching another one, and switching between those apps aren't way too fast, but not slow either. Heat management and RAM management were both pretty good as well. Software wise, just like the other Android based Blackberries, this is very clean and near stock. There are some interesting features like the productivity tab that you can check your task, messages, and calendar at one place. There's a little battery charging bar and locker feature that gives you security your enclave for your personal files, photos, and apps to be hidden. And interestingly enough, you can take a photo with your fingerprint and send it directly to the locker. With a little gesture, you can enable the privacy shade and redact your app so you can redact any of the important text or images before sharing them. The BlackBerry Key 2 also is the first BlackBerry ever to have dual cameras. You can launch that by pressing the power key twice quickly and the photo quality is in bright daylight or medium lit indoors is okay. However, the low light photos aren't terrible but not good enough for the price. There is a little bokeh mode called the portrait mode and just like the name implies it gives you depth effect or the faux bokeh. And surprisingly, those photos aren't too bad. However, the camera does lack 4K video recording and the selfie cam is simply bad. Moving on to the audio department, it's got a mono speaker on the bottom. This isn't one. And the sound coming out of that speaker isn't too loud and it also is a little bit mumbly. <laughs> We know this is not a multimedia phone, but a little disappointment there. Wired output through a earphone jack on top is pretty good, although it doesn't offer any kind of audio effects or customization. However, the biggest problem was the Bluetooth connection. I paired it up with my Gear Icon X and it had worst Bluetooth signal, hands down. By just holding the phone in my hand, it started having problem communicating with my earbuds. And as I put it in my pocket, almost immediately connection gets lost. I hope this issue is resolvable through a software update, but considering my key one had an LT signal issue, I don't think I trust TCL's RF capabilities anymore. Something they were good with was the battery. It's got 3,500 mils of built-in battery and it gave me six and a half hours to seven hours of screen on time. Charging is done through the USB type C port on the bottom that supports up to quick charge 3.0. And it also has a neat little thing called the boost mode that as the name implies, boosts up your charging speed. With the boost mode, 30 minutes give you 53%, an hour gives you 85%, an hour and 40 minutes for fully charging it. And now that I told you this much, time for conclusion. BlackBerry Key 2 is an expensive phone, a very expensive phone for the hardware specs. For the same price, you can get phones with way better camera, way better performance, and way better build quality. You can also get phones with way bigger screen, but that's not the point of this phone, so I'll let that part go. And that leaves you with the only reason 
the keyboard. But here's the thing, that keyboard isn't that good. I'm not talking about it being 2018 and keyboard being irrelevant. It's just simply not a well-built keyboard. The spacebar wiggles, the key pressures are way too shallow. When compared to a five-year-old Q10, this is clearly a worse keyboard. So unless you absolutely need the keyboard, I would strongly advise you to stay away from it. TCL needs to build a better phone if they want to charge us that much for this kind of spec. So that was BlackBerry Key 2. Thank you always for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. You can always meet us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. We'll see you guys later. Ciao.